Now, here's an outlook for 2021, if ever there was one. Sure and Partners saying, if you thought 2020 was good for equity markets, albeit eventually, wait until you see 2021. So our next guest has come in with three stocks across three sectors to get yourself ahead of the pack for 2021's predicted rally. Candice Burke joining us now from Shore and Partners, live from Chifley Tower here in Sydney. Candice, so we're, we're bullish for 2021. Uh, big picture, why is that? Yeah, thanks for having me. So I guess big picture, you know, we're seeing today uh, promising signs um, of the COVID-19 vaccine trials so far. Uh, today, we're seeing that the UK is going to roll it out. So, you know, there's predictions out there that baseline, we're assuming a quarter of the global population will be vaccinated uh, by next year. So this is increasing the likelihood of the global economy, you know, reaching those pre-COVID-19 output levels before the end of 2021. So in a nutshell, you know, looking like things getting back on track, and better news for us here in Australia with our GDP levels ticking up slowly. Um, you know, that's also thanks to the Australian fiscal stimulus package. Just over now, they've pledged $340 billion, which is roughly 16% of GDP. So that, that's a massive commitment. Um, and, you know, that was a great intro. And I wanted to leave your audience with some really tangible stock picks out there. But for us, you know, 2021, we, we think it will be positive. You want to look uh, in the healthcare sector, we think continuing that trend of 2020, that's going to play out 2021. Targeted government infrastructure spending uh, and consumer retail spending as well. All right, Candice, so things are looking crash hot for the local market. The local economy is also looking pretty good. Let's go down that infrastructure path. Now, we know that the Australian government is trying to go yep. and encourage lots of infrastructure out there at the moment. What's the other uh, favourite stock pick there at Sean Partners for the next 12 months? Yeah, so one of our greatest, um, I guess, ideas out there flowing in the market is um, Simic Group. Reason being, they've got a strong industry presence and long-term track record um, in that space, you know, in particular in the mining um, and, and targeted asset services government spending. The company's had a rocky uh, past and definitely 2020 wasn't great for their stock price. It got as low as, you know, $12, $13 back in March. But with the recent Elliott uh, transaction uh, through their mining services company, that they get to re retain 50% of the company, it's looking stronger than ever, um, in, in our opinion. And the landscape is, is looking great. The, the government's also backed about $110 billion to the Transport Infrastructure Program. So that's an instant injection into the support of the labour market, which we know will support the recovery Australian economy. One indicator that we look at is the crane numbers. Uh, and the company has reported the increasing use of the non-residential infrastructure projects such as roads, transport and utility upgrades around Australia. Uh, in fact, this morning there was an ASX announcement, announcement out um, that the company is in, in the prefer, preferred tender position for upgrades in Victoria. Mm -hmm. So positive outlook, we think, for the engineering uh, construction infrastructure you know, segment um, for the near term. Their mining business is probably going to have a kicker as well into FY21 given their investments in gold and energy metals. Mm -hmm. So all these are positive catalysts and factors, we think, you know, reaching to uh, an upgrade in our price target to $32. So about 20% upside on, the, on today's share price. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on Simic. Uh, I believe CSL is also in your scope there. This is one that so many people point to as one of the strongest businesses on the ASX, and it's hard to argue with that. The PE is at about 43, but you still see some pretty Definitely. good upside there. Yeah, so CSL is one of those stocks that, as you just said, you know, you can't ignore it. It's the second largest market cap um, on our market here. It's one of those stocks that you just want to buy and hold. That's what I tell our investors. Um, you know, trading around today, 297 levels just before coming on to chat to you guys. I noticed it was up when the, uh, doing quite strong compared to the, sort of the rest of the market. And it has come off like a 30 day rolling high of about 315, 3. 18 um, and and this sort of for us one of the reasons that we were all following on the news is obviously the uptick in US COVID cases has resulted in the reduced foot traffic um, into their blood and plasma donation clinics particularly in the US um, so this is definitely a short-term near risk that we're probably going to see play out in the share price because that recent dip is about 20 percent below average levels of donors um, but all the promising vaccination news we keep hearing um, both here and offshore and the strong performance and management of CSL, we continue to like the business and it's weathered, um, it's weathered this COVID-19 storm quite well. You know, in addition, the reason why, you know, CSL, we keep coming back to it, 
um, as our darling stock. Is it, it is backed by government again, so playing on that theme, they're committing about 1.7 billion mm -hmm. to pre-ordering 84 million doses of the vaccine with CSL and AstraZeneca. So we like that play. Um, and even before COVID hit, you know, CSL is a disruptor medical business when you think about what they offer um, and, and their distribu distribution chain. You know, they invest significant amount of gross profits back into their medical R&D. So they're foregoing, you know, profits to shareholders. It's not a, it's not a great dividend payout, as we know, um, just to disrupt their own medical research and development. So yeah, we're, we're positive on CSL. I, I think it could easily get back over 300 again. And the most bullish opinion... I can see out there is about 400 as a price target. So, you know, that would be fantastic if that plays off. 25% upside. I think everyone would go and take that every day of the week when it comes to a 12-month horizon. Uh, Candice, so we've got two out of three. Now, the last one on your list is Adore Beauty. Now, of course, IPO not too long ago got a lot of attention, a lot of excitement beforehand. Looking at the other chart here, though, uh, since listing, it has been pressured a little bit, but you see upside ahead. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And I think one of the reasons why it has kind of come off since listening is it doesn't have, like you said, a long track record in the market. So I don't think investors have fully understood the story um, and, and the business. But look, we've seen this story many times over. And what I mean by that is it's the Amazon um, for online female beauty products. Uh, it's Australia's 100% leading only e-commerce uh, beauty and personal care retailers. So, you know, playing on the theme of should the vaccine be delayed for some reason going into 2021, Adore Beauty is sort of well positioned in the sense that you can have your cake and eat it too, that we know that retail will still be quite strong going into to next year. They've offered over 230 uh, different brands, 11,000 products. So it's, it's your sort of mass market area for, for that. Um, and they have a high a customer retention rate was what I meant to say, sorry, in the sense that when you are on their platform, you know, consumers just want to spend a lot of time there and it mm -hmm. all is designed, their marketing, their beauty tutorials, everything's designed to satisfy the customer needs. Um, and if you strip back all their sales and revenue, uh, skincare is about 40% of all the brands and products offered on the platform, which makes up just over half of the revenue. So, um, you know, it, for us, it's, it's e-commerce. It's, it's going to benefit from the consumer spending uptick we're expecting um, because there's a lot of Aussie households at the moment. It's about 8 9% of GDP that we're all sitting on hoarded savings, they're calling it Absolutely. at the moment. So that's prime to be injected into the, um, into the retail sector. So it's looking strong uh, post-IPO. It's been very capitalised, not, ma not much debt on the balance sheet, which we like. Um, strong management, you know, uh, I think at the moment it's about five, uh, yeah, about 560 or 570 on the, on the market and we see about 40% upside to 825 is our price target. Something to go and brighten up your portfolio perhaps. Uh, Candice Burke from Shaw & Partners, thank you for joining us on the program today. Yes. Enjoy the rest of your day.